We're going to keep working with slope. So today we're going to be talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. Now this is one of these concepts that once you get the rules, <coughs> it's pretty easy stuff. But for some people it's getting there. Now, whenever you have parallel lines, they will never meet. Okay? Uh, kind of a, r a rough example is railroad tracks, but railroad tracks can have curves in them, of course, but you never want them to meet. Okay? Bad things would happen if they stopped being parallel to each other. Now, if you had two lines that were parallel, examples right here, what can you tell me about them? Yep. This would be the same slope. What is different about them? Yes? Okay, they would have different points. I'm going to get more specific. Yeah? Well, these go on forever in both directions because they have arrows, right? But what if I put a graph here? Now what would be different about them? Which one? The y-intercept. So the equation for this would be y equals mx plus b. The equation for this would be y equals mx plus b. What would be the same? Same would be m. Different would be b. So if you really think about it, that should make sense. Because if they were running parallel, that means they would be at the same angle to each other at all times. If one had a slightly different slope, wouldn't they meet at some time? Somewhere, okay? But if they have the same slope, they will never meet. The only time they will ever meet, if they have the same slope, is if they have the same y-intercept. Therefore, it would be the same line. So the only time they would ever meet is if they were identical equations, right? Which you would hope. Now, the other one we're going to look at is perpendicular. Now, perpendicular means they meet at 90 degrees. Now, say this one right here had a slope of 2, m of 2. Actually, no, that wouldn't be a 2. That would be because that's not, 1 is 90 degrees. So I'd say that's like a slope of about 3 over 2. It's a slope of about, no, I don't like that either. Slope of 1 half. That would be better for that line. 3 over 2 is greater than 1. Remember, 1 is like a 45. That's this line. Anyone want to wager a guess? You can't. You're not allowed. Wager a guess on the other slope. Raven? No. you got half right. It would definitely be negative. Would it not? No doubt about that. Yeah? Yeah. So how did I, or how did you, come up with that? Did you watch my the video? Okay. How do you think about it? It's always the negative reciprocal. Always opposite sign and reciprocal. Okay, so we could do investigations of the yin yang. 
but I think that we don't need to. So let's just go down to the rules. What are the rules explaining how slopes are parallel? Okay, so basically slopes are equal. And do you see how equal has two L's in it that are parallel to each other? Except there's only supposed to be one L and equal. But I'm just trying to stress something there, okay? <coughs> Okay, now, investigation, investigation, investigation. What is the rule? Okay, explaining perpendicular. So, if the slope of this one was 2, so I'm going to put an arrow there. What would the slope of this one be? Yes. Negative 1 over 2. Because that's 2 over 1. Right? And are you guys starting to see how fractions are a lot nicer when you're dealing with slope? In fact, I'm always going to encourage my students to make a fraction if they can. So when you're looking for different slopes, you can easily flip it. So they are negative reciprocals to each other. Okay. So is this stuff tough? No. Okay. If you're here today, you're going to think it's pretty easy. If you're not here today, hopefully you're watching the video. Okay, so if I had to find a line segment parallel to A, what would be the new slope? Yeah, Shana? Parallel. Four. B would be M equals negative two-thirds, right? If slopes are parallel, they're equal. I don't think we need to keep going, do we? Okay, let's do some perpendicular ones. Perpendicular to four? Negative one-quarter. So if you, if you want, write that as four over one. How about negative two-thirds? Make sure the signs are opposite. You can even put a positive there if you want to be really deliberate right now. How about C? Negative 5 over 4. D? 1 over 5. Okay. Now, these have two parallel slopes. Determine the k value. Yep. Should be 2, right? Does 1 half equal 2 over 4? So I would say it's 2. Okay, so what do you have to do to 2 to get 4 times by 2? Those are called equivalent fractions, right? So you always want to keep your fractions equivalent if you're doing parallel. Okay, for this one here, number uh, the second example, what do you have to do to 2 to get 6? So we'll do the same thing here. So what will K be? 15. Okay, two perpendicular lines have slopes of negative two-fifths 
in k over 8. Find the value of k. I want you to try this one. Because I bet you we're all going to go about it a little different. And maybe I would do it different than you. Okay, so I want to try it some different ways. I'm not even going to show you my way. Maybe one of you will do it the way that I do it. Maybe some of you will do it differently. There's more than one way to get to a certain place, right? And we all have different reasons for doing it or different thought processes. Okay. So first of all, What's our K? Yep. Sure. Okay, so K is 20. Shouldn't be negative because negative reciprocals. Okay, so just I don't want to set anybody up. So if you got K at 20, I want to know how you got it. Okay, Prashant? Okay, so you first took this and made it 5 over 2. And then, so then you did this, right? Okay, and you have to multiply by 4 here, by 4 here. So you get k is 20. Is that the only way to do this one? Yeah, sir? But you wouldn't want to go and compare these two, because mathematically that's not really right. Because in equivalent fractions, you only compare the tops. So you're missing a, a step in there for the rest of us. Okay, exactly. So what do you want me to put there then? Just nothing? No, tell me what. I'm, I, know, I, I know you're doing it right. I just want you to explain it to us. Okay. Okay, so you kind of did it this way then. So you went, what do I have to do to here to get here? Okay. You kind of did do this, <coughs> believe it or not. You just did, did the, without flipping it. Okay. Any, you know, could you have gone negative two-fifths equals negative eight over k? Then how come you didn't speak up? I was looking for other ways, right? Is this a true statement? Yeah. And this you have to multiply by four. So this you multiply by four. Okay. Whatever way you got there. Okay, a triangle has vertices negative 2, 3. So let's put them in. Negative 2, 3 would be there. That's A, negative 2, 3. B is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 2. C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. C is 4, 6. Okay, so we got ourselves a triangle. Let's do some line drawing.
Now, it says, prove that this is a right triangle. A proof is using mathematical reasoning that has been accepted to prove something else. Now, what do you know about right angle triangles? One, angle's one of the angles is a right angle. If you were looking at this triangle, what would be your guess where it is? At C. But you can't say, oh, I took out my protractor and I measured it and it was pretty close. Okay, you can't say that. That's not a proof. So how can you prove that's a 90? Cool? Nope, can't move it. Yep. Well, we don't know that yet. But if we... You would test it. Right. So right now, I can only make the assumption they meet at 90. How would I prove it? Find the slope of AC. Find the slope of BC or CB. What should they be to each other? Negative reciprocals. So perpendicular. Okay. So let's do AB. M, AB. Okay. So it's Y2. AC, sorry. Y2 is 6 minus Y1 over X2 is 4 over X1 is minus negative 2. So this would be 3 over 6, which is 1 half. Let's do M of BC. So I'm going to go negative 2, oops, 8 minus 6. And what am I doing? I was right. I want my y's, right? Negative 2 minus 6. This is y2, y1. <laughs> it's like mini mouse over there. Okay. And then I got 8 minus 4. What's negative 2 minus 6? So you would say, since M of AC is perpendicular to M BC, it is a right angled triangle. Okay, so there is your assignment that we should finish in class, and then uh, if it people work well, maybe the last 10 minutes we'll do some test getting back in.